Uh, last week we talked about Abraham uh, and his three visitors and him um, bargaining God down from finding, if he found 50 righteous men, he would save Sodom and Gomorrah, to if he found 10 righteous men, he would save Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, at some point in there, it switched from Abraham talking to three men to Abraham only talking to the Lord. I think, kind of meanwhile, two men showed up in Sodom. And when they arrived there, uh, Lot saw them. And Lot said, uh, come spend the night in my house. And, and they said, no, we're fine. City square's fine. It was common in those days. When you were traveling from town to town, you'd just sleep in the city square. Uh, if you didn't want to stay at the motel, or there wasn't one in town, or you couldn't afford it, you'd just sleep in the city square. No one thought anything. Or if it was full, no one thought anything about it. Um, so they said, no, we're fine. We'll, we'll just stay here in the square. And Lot insisted that they come into his house to stay for the, uh, for the night. After they got in the house, the Bible says all the men in the city came to Lot's door and told Lot, bring those men out here because we want to hurt them. Uh, they wanted to do very bad things to the men. And Lot said, don't, don't do this. Don't be so wicked. These men came under my protection. And so don't be so wicked. Lot even went so far as he offered to send his daughters out for the men to use instead. And the men insisted they had to have the Lot's guests. And the, the men got so bad, the crowd got so bad, that the two guests pulled Lot into the house, shut the door behind him, and struck the crowd with blindness. And this was a blindness so bad, they couldn't even find Lot's door. So they couldn't feel the door, I guess, even. Uh, so that, because they were afraid that they were, the men were going to hurt Lot. The men were saying, um, how dare you judge us? You should be tolerant of us and our decisions. Don't you dare judge us. Um, but the, the angels pulled Lot into the house struck them in with blindness, and then they told Lot, get your wife, get your two daughters you have here, and if you have any children anywhere else in the city or anyone else that's related to you or anything, get them and get out of this city, get to the mountains, because God's fixing to destroy this city. Lot went to um, his son-in-law's now, I don't know if he had other daughters and these were his daughter's husbands or if it was the, um, the fiancés of his two daughters he had living at home. Uh, but he went to them and he said, God's going to destroy the city. Come leave the city with us. And they thought he was telling a joke. And they wouldn't listen to him. So finally, the angels... They kept telling Lot, hurry up, hurry up. They finally grabbed Lot in one hand and his wife in the other and his daughters, because two angels, so four hands, his two daughters, and they dragged them out of the city. Now, let's see if I could do this with knock, out knocking over. On the way out of the city, they said, run to the hills, don't look back. Um, Lot actually argued with him. He said, well, there's a little town next door, and it's a tiny little town, so surely God could spare such a tiny little town. The, the angels said, just go, get out of here. So they turned, they ran, the angels said, don't look back. But Lot's wife looked back, and when she did, she turned to a pillar of salt. Just changed into a pillar of salt there. That's quite sure. Um, uh, that's not what I pictured a pillar of salt looking like. Well, <laughs> I, we, we're 
we're each left open to our imagination of what that would have looked like. Um, the, the person who did the flannel graph thought it would look like a statue of her as a pillar of salt. After a few years, it wouldn't matter because all the features would wash away in the rain. Anyway, she turned to a pillar of salt, and Lot and his daughters ran to the mountains. They listened this time to the angels who quit arguing. They went to the mountains, and God rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah and all the little towns around and burned up the entire area. That area today still has so much sulfur rock all over it, you can't grow crops. That, that area, um, and I still don't have my right map, my bigger map. Uh, that area is right around here, and it is still, the ground is still so full of sulfur that you can't grow anything. So when God destroyed it, he meant it. He completely destroyed it. And he destroyed the entire, the entire culture. He did not find even 10 righteous men in that city. He found one. But he made sure he got out. He protected the one righteous man when he punished all the others who were not righteous. So let's sing our song. Okay. We're going to climb our mountain. <laughs> climb, climb up, sunshine mountain, heavenly. 